Welcome to Booming Your Bottom Line, a weekly podcast on how to find, serve, and keep local boomer consumers as your customers. If you are a small business owner, then this podcast is for you. Hosted by Mark Hager, CEO of Age and Place Networks, publisher of AgeandPlace.com, and expert consultant in the boomer consumer industry. And Aaron Murphy, architect, certified aging and place specialist, national speaker, and published author on aging in place. These two small business owners are going to help you learn what you need to know and step-by-step step what you need to do to grow your company through serving the rapidly growing older consumer niche. Now, get ready to supercharge your business. Hi, everybody. This is Aaron Murphy, and I'm here with my co-host, Mark Hager. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Booming Your Bottom Line. So in our last episode, Mark got to uh, drag me through the mud and teach you all a little bit about me. And uh, it's my turn to flip that script and grill him a little bit. So this is your opportunity to learn a little bit about Mark and why it is that we're teamed up and doing this podcast for small business. And I'm going to start with just giving you a little bit of bio background about Mark. So Mark's an information technology veteran and aging in place thought leader and advocate. And he's the founder of AgeInPlace.com, a resource for baby boomers, older consumers, and business owners, as well as organizations to learn, and learn about the aging in place movement. Mark spent the last eight years teaching people how they can utilize universal design, home remodeling, assistive technology, community-based programs, financial planning, healthcare, and other products and services to continue living at home, where he and I both believe you should, for as long as we can thus putting off that transition to a retirement setting or assisted living. Mark's the CEO of Age in Place Network, so leading authority in the aging in place niche and a trusted voice for both consumer and business owners in the industries associated with that aging in place movement. Mark, I've got more on you and I could continue to fluff your feathers, but I think I'd rather have <laughs> you kind of filter your bio into our conversation. So if you don't mind, um, you know, feel free to toss in some of those other things that are make you the expert that you are. But let's just dive right in because I know that the small business owner's time is valuable. So exactly. let's just jump right into our questions. All right. Okay. All right. Well, first of all, obviously, thanks for. I don't have to thank you for being here. This is a joint venture between you and me, so you're stuck with me. But uh, <laughs> let's get right into it. I know I picked a great guy to be partners with on this. So. You have a real extensive background in the IT side, web development, digital marketing. How'd that turn into an aging in place niche? Well, you know, it's funny. Um, when my parents started getting close to their 70s, and I, I, I started to explore ways that they could be more independent as they grow, grew older. And obviously, you know, they'd bought a home and they planned on living the rest of their lives there. Uh, my, my father and mother had both been ill, and I wanted them to be able to maintain their quality of life, but still uh, have everything that they needed. Now, in our situation, in my family's situation, I don't live near them. Um, my younger brother does. So as they, you know, illnesses came up or, you know, they had problems at the house, I would find myself having to go down there a lot and work with my the other members of my family to give them the things that they needed, fix their house up or whatever. And that, that went on for just a little while. And then my younger brother, who was in real estate and construction, um, called me one day and was talking to me about the Certified Aging in Place designation, which I'd never heard of that. Okay. And it really piqued my interest that there was someone who was dedicating you know, this, these many resources to try to educate people about this. So I started doing my own education. And fast forward, that just turned into years of me studying about the, the baby boomers and what they're growing older, the kind of impacts that it was going to have on communities and families. And that just turned into a passion. And I've spent the last, you know, eight years or so just educating as many people as I could about aging in place, talking to as many business owners as I could about their role and how important you know they are to their communities yeah yeah well and that's true in every every small town every every major city right i mean it it takes a village and so that's exactly. why we want to get to those professionals 
what is it, what'd you learn? Why is aging in place such a, an attractive option for people? I know what some of the stats are from AARP about who wants to age in place, but what did you find? Well, I think the thing that probably stood out to me the most was that aging in place, although people didn't have a name for it, is kind of the de facto choice. It's the choice they don't make. It's made for them. And mainly it's because they don't give a lot of thought to what their lives are going to be like after they retire. It's not that, you know, I mean, millions of Americans and people all over the world have, you know, worked their entire lives and they've, they've built a nest egg up. They've, they've funded their retirement accounts. And, you know, lots of people in, in the baby boomer generation have made those financial commitments to their future but it's stopped there and you have you end up having all these other things tons of things that they don't think about and it means that there's going to be gaps between what they planned for and what they're really going to need and that's where I actually see a real opportunity for small businesses you know there are tons of places that a small business owner can step in and help um, ways that they can add services or products as the needs in their particular community grow. They see a need, they can very quickly ramp up on a particular service to step in and not only help those people, but also add to their own bottom line. Can you give me a couple of examples where adding something to your portfolio, pick something at two different ends of the business spectrum, um, you know, whether it's driving people to doctor's appointments or cleaning out gutters, right? I mean, there's everything in between, isn't there? What are a couple of businesses that you know for sure could find huge value in adding services at the boomer level and would see that hit their bottom line? Well, I will tell you one that I have seen um, that people are beginning to pick up on, and that is transportation. Yeah. Transportation is going to be such a big deal. Oh, and yeah. when you think about it, and we'll get into more statistics and stuff later, but I mean, I, I don't want to inundate everyone with a bunch of statistics, but when we're talking about having 20 to 21 percent of the population that is over the age 65, it's not just that they're all just turned over 65. You've got 65, you've got 70, you've got 75, you've got 80, and all the kinds of health conditions in between, everybody's different. You yeah. know. There's going, to, and there's going to be tons and tons, millions of people who are not going to be able to drive. Yes. So, and there are some companies, both in-home care and concierge-type services that I've seen here in America who've really seen this need, and they've stepped in and, and just added that as a service to what they offer. Right. Where they go in and, you know, you can call them and you schedule them. They charge a flat rate fee per hour. You know, where you can rent them for the day, whatever you want to do, and it, it's a it's a service. Obviously, you know, there's insurance things you'd have to think about, but a, a small business owner could take that with a you know hire one or two people to mm -hmm. do the driving, and then have this whole brand new service that they can offer their customers. And right. a great example of actually of transportation actually is uh, Lyft Hero out in California. I don't know if you saw the article about them or not. Um, but there's this young man, he's in, I think he's in his late twenties and he saw this need and he hired a bunch of medical students to use their own cars. You know, they got the insurance they needed yeah. and older people can call them and schedule rides for wherever they need to go. And the bonus is, is he gets to tout that he has these medically trained people who can handle, right. you know, basic first aid things, CPR, stuff like that. Right. You know, and he offers that as a service to his clients. Yeah, um, and I, I've seen it, you know, everything, like I said earlier, everything from cleaning gutters to picking up dog poop in the yard. I mean, ev there are so many businesses that are coming out of the ground right now to meet this need. And so I suppose whether you're considering a business or whether you need to make sure that you stay in front of the curve and continue to beat your competition and have a unique sales position right right and, like the, like that guy who can say we've got medically trained folks driving the car just in case well i think that the 
the number of business options there are, the number of choices for services are, are only limited by a person's imagination. Because you have to think seriously about the position that these consumers are going to be in. They, there are basic things that they've done for the last 50 years or 60 years or whatever that they're not going to be able to do anymore. They're not going to be able to take care of their home like it needs to be taken care of. They're not going to be able to drive themselves places. You know, it goes beyond, you know, most people in the niche, they think, you know, automatically home remodeling or some type of, of, of medical care or something like that. But it's way bigger than that. We're talking people to mow lawns, you know, helping people manage their, their finances, you know, doing their bills for them, personal shopping. You know, I mean... I tell you something else that's going to be really big, and that is deliveries, especially groceries. Wow. Companies who can get into doing grocery delivery are going to make a killing because these people are not going to be able to do it for themselves. And you're going to have family members who are busy. They have their own families. They have their careers. They want to make sure their mom and dad are taken care of. And a service like that is just – services like that are just going to skyrocket. Yeah, now, we could you know we could go on for two hours just oh, about yeah. the different choices that you have about what you could do to start your own business. So clearly, humongous opportunity. What should a business owner be thinking about? How how do they get ready for this? Well, that actually leads to something pretty important, and it, it's there's way more to this than just working with the older consumer. You know we. You, you have the idea of customer service and you know how well they can access your people and your product and stuff like that um, but it goes deeper into how physically how they can access your building you know inside and out um, but it extends to how easy it for is it for them to do business with you and and, and that whole concept um, is referred to as customer experience uh, to answer your question, and, and I want to be able to cover this in future episodes more, I'd really like to dig down into customer experience a little bit. I think that there are a number of things that can be done right now. First off, you need to look for a way, look for ways to make it super easy to do business with you. R remove the stumbling blocks. Remove the things that cause um, them pain, essentially. Yep. You know, one exa one great example is your phone system. When someone calls you, especially an older consumer, they do not want to have to push a bunch of buttons on the phone. They want right. to talk to someone. You, even if you can't give them what they want, which that's going to happen all the time. But if you can, if they have someone to talk to and they feel like they're being listened to, that goes a long way towards their experience with you. And another great example is, is waiting. You know, when, when they have to wait in your store or your office, you know, what are, what are they doing? They're sitting there. They're, they're bored. They don't want to be there. You know, if it's a doctor's office, they're there with a bunch of sick people. If it's, a, you know, some other type of service, they may, you know, hours. They could spend hours of their week waiting in offices, and they don't want to do that. And it's also an opportunity, and, and we're going to talk about this more too, and I don't want to get too far off track, but this waiting is an opportunity for businesses. You know, if they, if they can turn the waiting into part of the experience of doing business with them, yeah. whether it be through, you know, I've like worked with dentists who we've go I've gone in and helped them create videos that play on a TV, not that advertise, but that educate, you know, okay. I've, you know, worked, talked with business owners about, you know, people standing in line. If everybody's been to Walmart or some grocery store and there's, there's 50 gajillion people and you have someone who's, <laughs> who's 70 years old and it has a hard time standing in one spot carrying their stuff. You can't do yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I think that there's, in the future, we're going to see, you know, you've seen stores that had parking and registers for expecting mothers. You're going to see the same thing in stores for older consumers. 
That's a good point. Yeah, beyond just the ADA stall, you know, not, you don't have to necessarily have the handicap sign in your hanging from your rearview mirror. Yeah, no, there's so many things we're going to get into, and that's why we're doing this. Uh, you know, every sentence Mark has said so far is a podcast on its own. <laughs> it really is. So we'll get into every piece of that puzzle. But just to relate to the folks that are going to be listening to our podcast as we kick off, what are, you know, some of the business owners you have talked to, what are they struggling with? What are they hearing? You know, what's your ear on the ground on the business level? Well, I'd say probably the biggest thing I hear from business owners is how do I find paying customers? Yeah. Um, and another big one I get is the frustration they have in dealing with adult children. Ah. Um, and, and I totally get why both of these are issues. But I think that the, the real thing is, is you have to step back and not only understand what's going on in the market, you know, and all the way down to the actual people that you're doing business with and knowing about them, you know, what are their pain points? What are their desires? It's building a persona, you know, yeah. for, for, for your, for your target market. Yeah. And, and I think that business owners need to realize that, you know, as the market grows, it should only be expected that the number of providers are going to grow and they are not the only game in town. Absolutely. And that is where customer experience is going to come in very, very heavy and hard. Yeah. Um, and your stance, your reaction to what you learn about your, your customers and, and even these adult children that are caring for their parents or, or just even if they're just minimally involved, it's only going to get more. They're going to get more involved. Oh, yeah. Your approach to that is going to define – how well you succeed. And I right. will tell you, in my opinion, that the business owners that can get customer experience right and that can get the experience right for family caregivers, yeah. those are the people that we're going to see ultra success in. Yeah. And we'll, yeah, we'll get into many equations about you know, education and time and trust and rapport and all the stuff. And it's everything like it's everything from, you know, can we reach your shelves to is your staff trained? Exactly. How to speak to these folks and have the patience. And again, so many pieces to the puzzle. That's why Mark and I are together. Mark, if I could leave you, you know, my maybe the, the home run question, the end question for our short segments for folks that are busy. What's that one piece of advice you want to give a business owner starting today as we head into our podcast series? What would you say today is an actionable item that they should be thinking about or starting to do? Okay. I'm actually going to give you four, but I'm going to make them quick. All right. One, I tell owners they need to be the experts in their community. They won't be the only expert, but they need to figure out, and we're going to talk about it in future podcasts, but they need to to step up and become the expert. Two, they need to build a really good professional referral network. You've got to have people to refer to because as an expert, you're going to have people come to you and you can't help them. Yep. But you want to be able to point them in the direction because experts are connectors. Yep. But what that means for a business owner is that they get referred to as well. Um, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, three is they need, they need to figure out how to reach their target market and okay. the days of blaring ads on television and radio and yellow pages. Now there's still some people who, who respond to that, but it's, it's not the large, larger market segment. You've got to figure out how to be where they are when they are needing your service. And that includes the older consumers and their adult children. Um, that, I, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, though, that, and that we'll get into this too, but that's about creating a brand, right? And, absolutely. You know, that's what's called the reticular activator, which is if and when and the time is right and something clicks in your head and with that clicks your name, your company name, right? They're, they're synonymous, they're associated in someone's brain because we have done the repetitive exposure and the soft touching 
continually right. over time, correct? Right. And the biggest part of that, I'll just give everyone a little teaser and in, in, into into oh, into Mark, that. don't tease me. Uh, one one little back. teaser, <laughs> and that is the hub of that entire wheel of building that brand is consumer education. Yeah. And we'll we'll Good. talk about that more later. Good. What's um, four? Number four, which we already talked about, is building that customer experience. Being the being the company that wows them. You know, and it's not about glitz and glamour. It's not always about them getting everything they want, but it's about being consistent. It's about being fair. It's about them not feeling like they have to fight to give you their money. And there are a thousand, maybe a million different things that go into that. And we're going to talk a lot more about that later. Yeah, but, you know, point to the folks listening, though, right? I mean, the boomer consumer has five times the net worth of the U.S. average. So is it worth the exercise of learning how to get really good at this and be Absolutely. better in your competition? Darn right it is. Uh -huh. Good. So, Mark, how does someone get a hold of you and the website? And where, where are all these future podcasts? What are, what are your contact points? Okay. Well, my website is ageinplace.com. Uh, you can reach me at mark at ageinplace.com. Uh, you can also go to the contact page there, and I have a phone number and other ways for you to get a hold of me. The uh, We've yeah. stood up a new section on ageinplace.com just for small business, uh, which if you're watching this, you probably already know that. But if someone on YouTube, you can just go to ageinplace.com slash small business, and you'll find it there. Awesome. Very good. So anything else you want to share or anything for closing argument or closing, just light a little fire under a small business, but what do you want to do right there? Let's close it up with a bang. All right. Well, I will say that we are approaching the point in time when it's going to get very painful in communities across the United States. And now is the time for small businesses to get their game plan together and really get out there and start serving this market. It's, you know, I, this is a two, two edged sword. One, you're going to be doing a lot of good, which we all know is important. These people oh, yeah. need you. But two, there is a ton of money on the table. No. And it's not about taking advantage of people, it's about no. being a provider they can rely on for anything, whether it's lawn service or in home care. Absolutely. And every business owner is going to be affected, and that's what we want to help you do, is get that Absolutely. piece of the pie for yourself. Yeah, we're going to teach you how to reach them, connect with them, engage them, and let them learn to trust you and that you bring value, and they'll pay for value. But if they smell that you're in it for the money, you're out the door. So exactly. it better be about your passion and your heart. Mark and I are both ethical, hardworking guys, and I'm a small business owner. We both reached, you know, national, international levels with this exact blueprint and discussion that we're about to have going into this video podcast. Yep. So stay tuned for the series because we're going to break it down for you. There's a million miles and 47,000 angles, and we're going to start breaking it down and making it make sense for you. All Thanks, right. Till next week and our first subject matter, we just want to say have a great week. And go ahead and boom that business bottom line. Come back and see us again. We'll tell you how. Thanks so much for listening to Booming Your Bottom Line with Mark Hager and Aaron Murphy. To learn more about starting, building, and growing a local business that profits in the older consumer niche, just visit the website at agentplace.com slash small business. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter while you're there. If you'd like to get in contact with us, you can email us at smallbusiness at agentplace.com. Fill out the contact form on the website or give us a ring at 865-236-1247. Booming Your Bottom Line is a joint venture of agentplace.com and empowering the mature mind.